All right, we just went through the notes on how do we set up conditional probabilities and independence. So let's talk about um, this through an example. All right, let's check out our understanding. Um, Yellowstone National Park surveyed a random sample of 1,526 winter visitors to the park. They asked each person whether or not sh he or she owned, rented, or never used a snowmobile. Respondents were also asked whether they belonged to an environmental organization like the Sierra Club. The two-way table below summarizes this data. Boom. So suppose we randomly select one of the survey respondents. Define events E, S, and N as given. So what are we doing right here? What are we interpreting um, when we say find P, N, given E? Well, what we want to do is we interpret this value is because <clears throat> right here is we are trying to find the probability probability of um, n of of randomly selecting um, a survey respondent all right um, given they were a member, an environmental, enviro member, or club member. Ah, can't we relate? <laughs> environmental club member, and it's right, enviro club member. So given the rem and all right and and never use a snowmobile okay and never used a snow mobile mobile you know put that up mobile all right so let's find that probability so to figure this out um given their environmental uh, club members so this is going to be the yes okay so environmental club member. So given they're here, all right, what's the probability that they never are using this? Okay, um, and so what we have here is um, we could write this out: probability of n, all right, and e over the probability of e. Um, a easier way that I generally do it is what I said right here. This technically would just be 212 divided by 305. Um, you can see that this also works out because if you have 212, all right, um, 212, all right, divided by, so probability of N and E would be over 1,526 over the probability of just E happening, which is 305 over 1,526. We realize that this actually factors in and turns into that value. Um, which you can put in your calculator and determine that's going to equal about 0 0.695, 0 0.695, 0 0.695. So that's the probability of randomly selecting a survey respondent given they were a environment club member and never used snowmobile. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. So given that the chosen person is not a snowmobile owner, what's the probability that she or she is an environment club member? Okay, so essentially, all right, write your answers are probably still not using correct symbols. Okay, so we're going to take the probability of um, given chosen is not a snowmobile owner. Okay, not a snowmobile owner. Um, so basically, S not. All right, so a complement of S. Um, and they are a um, environmental club member okay so we're going to say they are e okay so knowing that we're going to go with a not i'm going to erase this boom okay and essentially not a owner so not an owner would be part of this group right here okay that group right there and what we have is is going to be a part of e okay 
um, where they're environmental. So we're going to have this right here. Okay. All right. And this. Okay. So not and yes. And so we're talking about this group right there. So yes. All right. Um, given that I have that. All right. So um, never use this. So if we write this information out here, what's the probability of um, E and not um, snowmobile owner over the probability of not being a snowmobile owner. And so we have to add up some values right here. And so if we have this right here, it's going to be 657 plus 574. Okay. And so for those totals, we have, all right, 1,231, and right here where they also are a member and a snowmobile owner, and so we have 200 plus 77, and that's going to equal 289. And how do I get those values? Well, 212 plus 77, and then 657 plus 574, and that's how I got those values right there. If we put that into our calculator, all right, um, 289 divided by 1, 2, 3, 1, and then we have, all right, approximately, all right, 0.234, boom, is our value. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And how do you use the notation and how to set this up. Now, finally, we want to talk about independent. So are, this, are the events of snowmobile owner? And environment club member independent of each other. So once again, if we go back, independence means when knowing an event has or has not occurred, does that affect the probability of a second event? Well, let's just pick one of the events. And so if we want to say, okay, the probability of a being a snowmobile owner is S. Well, that should equal, according to what we have over here, uh, probably S should be no matter if you are an environment club member or not. The probability of A should E be the same. And so down here, the probability of being a snowmobile owner, I'm just going to take this one again. Okay. The probability of being a snowmobile owner um, is 295. All right. 295 out of 1,526. 295. Uh, 1,526. All right, and we can figure that out, which is approximately 0.193. Well, if that is true, then that if they are independent, then that has to equal the probability of uh, S given E. Okay, and so. If that is true, then we have to also determine if these are going to be equal. So if we have that, given that you're an environmental, okay, so you are part of here, all right, and you own a snowmobile, okay, so those should be the same, okay, so that would be, if you're, so if you have, that should be the same thing as 16 out of, all right, 305. And what you notice is, is that this right here, 16 divided by 305, is actually equal to 0 0.052. Those are not equal. So therefore, they are not independent, right? Not independent events. Not independent events. We can also verify this right, by saying, what about S if it was not right, an environmental owner? So given that you are not an environmental owner, so no, and your owner right here, okay? So 279, 79 divided by, all right, um, 1,221. Those values, once again, Are not going to be equal because that actually equals 0 0.187 or 0 
8. Once again, these values are not equal. Because these probabilities are not the same, we can say that um, these events are not independent. Because once again, independent events, it doesn't matter. All right, um, one event does not affect the other one. So the probability of A being sold by the owner should be the same whether you are given that you um, are part of the club or not. And so we would say they are not independent. All right, well, I hope this helps you out in understanding more how to use conditional statements and how to determine whether or not events are independent. All right, good luck and God bless and the rest of your problems.